a university in New Zealand wanted to determine if movies were getting more violent. They used James Bond series as a gauge. So they considered everything in a movie from trivial to severely violent acts. That could be slapping someone to killing someone. Mm. How many acts slash moments do you think Dr. No contained? I'm um, going to wager a guess of four. 15. 109. Well, it was Sean Connery, and he does like to slap women. <laughs> and 100 of those are just Sean Connery slapping Stop. women. <laughs> <laughs> Which, that's why you were off, because you were like, I don't consider that violence at all. <laughs> no, I was counting how many times he slaps a guy. Dink, meet Felix Leiter. Hello. Felix, say hello to Dink. Hi, Dink. Dink, say goodbye to Felix. Hmm? Uh, man talk. Quantum of Solace is the most violent Bond film. Oh, shit. So per their uh, numbers. But it doesn't even have but... the nutsack roping in it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> now, did you count every single nutsack rope? Oh, absolutely. Yes, just... yes yeah, okay. you would do it, yes. Every time the rope ball comes in contact with the nutsack is one act of violence. <laughs> okay, all right. I didn't know the whole nutsack scene was just violence. Count as one. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, how many do you think in Quantum? So if Dr. No, <laughs> the first Bond film in 61, had 109, I'm going to say it's like 700. I'm going to go with the same number that I thought the budget was and say 400. <laughs> 250. Oh, gee, that, I'm way see, off. What, see, we should have gone with the number that was the actual budget of the movie. About, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. They're like, for every act of violence, it's $1 million. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get one extra punch in this scene? There's like the bean counters like, Shut I'm sorry, down. we only Shut have enough line items for 10 punches for this scene. We've only budgeted that much. Making stuff is hard, especially in the entertainment world when there are millions of dollars on the line. And we are going to talk about these disastrous, never-ending, and sometimes dangerous productions. This is The Shit Show. Hello, everyone. My name is Ian. I am joined by Agent 8008 Clint. Hello. And Agent Double D Ray. <laughs> oh. They're both boob jokes. Boobies. <laughs> Don't tell everyone that listens to the podcast my boob size. Jeez, so embarrassing. 8008. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> Stick that in a calculator. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so since my last movie uh, or video was about the 50-year journey to get Casino Royale to the screen, today we're going to talk about the film's direct sequel, Quantum of Solace. And while we're, we'll, let's just get into it, why are you wearing the hat? All right, so I, it's, it's <laughs> my, my bowler hat, and that's what Odd Job wears in the Miller Bond movie. <laughs> So if I threw this at you, I'd cut your head clean off. <laughs> that is going to come up. And I'm also wearing my Oxford College t-shirt as well, because I think oh. that's like where Q went to college or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's England. Oh, it's England. And, yeah. Oh, wait. Your Q is not named after Bond Q, though. He's named after my, Star my, Trek yeah, Q. I mean, right? he, yes. if there's three Qs. Not Okay. So I tell people he's named after my grandpa Q and Star Trek Q and Bond Q, but not Q and on Q, because <laughs> fuck that noise. Yes, yes. He um, was ahead of the curve. Maybe he is Q. Right? No, someone uh, someone saw my Q tattoo, and I was like, uh, Q, like Q and on. I was like, God damn it. No, I got this years before Ooh, that, that was ever a thing. Yeah, yeah, before Q and on was a thing, even. Yeah. Ooh, that does suck. I know. I don't regret it. Like people like Just put it underneath it. That's my son's name. Yeah, my son's name. Yeah. Q and then just like like you in parentheses. I yeah. <laughs> my son. Or okay. just write not a non under. Yeah. Q not a non. Not a non. Not a non. <laughs> yeah, so that's my that's the reason okay. behind my bowler. It's getting harder and harder to think of stuff to like wear and bring for the for these episodes. Qu yeah, quite quite a stretch. But you did drive your Aston Martin here, so that yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What had happened weirdly? And it's not nobody's fault. I mean, it's my fault, mainly, is that, you know, the stunt guys were like, oh, God, you can do this. So I'd get more and more and more to do. And I was loving it. It was great. I was jumping all over the place. So I threw myself into the stunts more than I threw myself, because I, I, the script was a bit kind of like, I don't know what to do about the script. I can't, I, I'm not a writer. I can't help. And even though Mark and I would sit and we'd try and bash things out, I couldn't really help. So I threw myself into stunts, and I basically volunteered for every single stunt in the movie. 
And that was, with hindsight, it was a bad mistake because I got badly hurt. <laughs> so I was thinking about this and about how um, how the the Bond films are kind of like the, they they come every few years and then it just kind of just happens. People watch it and they go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then as I was sitting there writing this up, um, I was sitting there going, why are we spending so much tam- damn time on Bond in general and whatnot? And like Bond movies are not everyone's cup of tea, if you will. Um, <laughs> That's Earl British. Gray, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the series is film royalty. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's been around since 61. That I mean the novels have been longer, but like the the movies cuz that's what we talk about. The movies have been around since 61 and No Time to Die is the 25th film. And this was Damn. the second longest running franchise. It just got recently passed by Marvel, the MCU, um, Eternals being their 26th uh, film. And it is the second oldest, uh, both the MCU and Bond being beaten out by the 36 films of, come on, come on, come on. Land before time. Come on, Clint. Godzilla. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Gojira. <laughs> yeah. 36. Clint, you, no, okay, this, is no an, we, this is embarrassing, Clint. It is, because it is, we're going to cut this. Start over. I'm going to give you the right answer. <laughs> no, we're keeping all of this in. I, I, need the, I need everyone to know. Your shame. Your shame. I only started watching those like four months ago. I right. know, but you mentioned them. <laughs> like, I know. They're, they're really okay. fun, though. So those started in 1954. So a couple years earlier, but... I knew that. <laughs> I told you that. <laughs> so, so Bond films have just been around it's forever. Um, almost everybody we know is just he grew up on them, right? Um, even if you didn't wa- go to them in the theaters, it was just always one of the. There's always a Bond movie on television or whatever. Well, and everybody's um, got their favorite Bond. Like there's 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 mm-hmm. uh, arguments like who's better? Yeah, exactly. Brosnan or Roger Moore or Sean yeah. Connery. It's like Batman's now. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> it's like Batman's now. <laughs> It's like, who's your Batman? Who's your favorite favorite Batman? Batman? But it's, I mean, it's kind of like this huge, like, thing to be handed that torch, right? Right. And for me, I, I, I grew up on Bond films. I'm not the biggest fan of Bond films. Um, I would say anything pre-Brosnan are pretty boring. (laughs) They, they are, they are of their time. They're very dated. Um, And Brosnan was my Bond growing up because he's the most attractive bar none oh yeah <laughs> and I he mean, just hands down. he just exudes like handsome and suave right. and 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 badass and uh and of course uh gold 64 is like mm. the reason why most people really really love bond i was um, listening to our... tina turner uh you know seeing golden on my way over here <laughs> and i remember listening to the song <laughs> as a kid and then seeing the movie and i'm like there's no character in this movie called Goldeneye. Because like when she's singing the song, it's like, Goldeneye, I found yeah. his weakness. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, we're going to learn about this character, Goldeneye. And then it turns out it's just like some satellite. It's like, just a oh, satellite. Okay. Mm. Oddly enough, I did learn this recently. I did not know this. Goldeneye is the name of Ian Fleming's getaway hut in Jamaica. Oh, cool. He called it Goldeneye. And so that's why they named the movie after it. And in the beginning of No Time to Die, Bond is in Jamaica and they use the actual golden eye. So he does have a knack for naming weird places after dumb code names. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll get, I wish, we'll actually my, go I wish my code name was Golden Eye. Stop yeah. calling me Golden Eye. Okay. It's a pretty. It's pretty. <laughs> That's a pretty brazen. <laughs> pretty. Yeah. Uh, pretty badass name. Um, I'm not, not, am I not you can call. Enough? You can call me. A, yeah, right. You can. You guys can start calling me Pussy Galore. <laughs> <laughs> Octopussy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so okay. So Bond movies are big in the U.S., but they are enormous internationally, uh, especially in the U.K. So like, No Time to Die just recently became like the highest grossing film in the U.K. like ever. Yeah. Like that's how big it is. I mean, isn't um, he basically their Superman? Yeah, essentially, right? Like, like it's the like equivalent this of... is this is the our this is Batman. ours, yeah. right? Yeah. It's it's um, James Bond and Doctor Who. Like those are their <laughs> those are their superheroes. The the cool in the camp. Um <laughs> wait, which one are we talking about? Which <laughs> Which was Clint, there's you know, only one answer you know to that. What we're talking about. <laughs> I love them both. <laughs> so so when I when so when we mention that it's history, just understand that like this is a big deal. Yeah. Like it's it's 
just there's not very many franchises that can say those numbers, say that how big they were. Right. I wouldn't. I mean, the thing is, you said that the longest one with 36 films is Godzilla. But like, like I would never have said, oh, yeah, Godzilla is a franchise because it just feels like. I mean, I get that it is, but it just feels like a bunch of random movies that they keep making that just like happen to have Godzilla well, or other monster kaiju in them, you know? Most of them never came to the United States, really. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. just huge in Japan. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. First off, thoughts on my Casino Royale video, uh, stories that were told in it, or the movies themselves? I remember watching it and just thoroughly loving how you were able <laughs> to throw in titles of the movies into the narration. <laughs> and it was it, it was seamless. It was pretty fucking and I, and I was clever, watching, was like, to be oh, honest. That's a, yeah. You fuck, yeah, that's awesome. That was very hard because you couldn't, I, how do you work in octopusy into a sentence? Um, Easy. I just, I, you just did. We just did it. It was seamless. The video made me both want to watch and also never lay my eyes on the original Casino Royale. You, you have wait, to. Wait, 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 wait. Um, the the old black and white TV one? No, no. The, or the, the 60s the one? The 60s one. <laughs> I don't the one, know the if The one I with can. Uh, Peter Sellers? Yeah. yeah. It is. No, like, you have to see it. He it is like absolute. such a dick to work with, but I love him in, like, Dr. Strangelove. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's an incredible actor, but he was, yeah, he was an absolute prick. No, that that original Casino Royale is my favorite Bond movie. And I <laughs> there's no, sh- I have no shame in saying that. It is. It, it is, is. so fucking bonkers, bonkersville. It's so good. <laughs> I, I recommend everybody watch it just so that you can say that you've watched it. Yeah. Because while you're watching it, it is stupid. It is boring for long portions. Mm-hmm. It it just goes nowhere. You have no idea what's going on. But then when you start thinking about like thinking about it, you're just like, what the fuck was going on in that? <laughs> or like, and then you're like, what the hell? There was a whole scene where they were trying to seduce Bond in some Scottish mansion. Why the fuck was he there? Like yeah. you're just like you were so fucking confused. Oh, it's great. And and then like Woody Allen shows up because yeah. why the hell not? It's it's amazing. It's it's very very strange. <laughs> I mean, and there's scenes in that that are you're like, oh, th- I understand now where Austin Powers yes. got that because people think they're like, oh, Austin Powers is like a spoof of James Bond. Da-da-da. It's a very specific spoof of that James Bond movie, Casino mm. Royale. Yeah, like there's so you're, many. If you're a fan of Austin yeah. Powers. Definitely watch it because then you go, oh, because the the love of love. (laughs) That that song came from the Casino Royale, Mm -hmm. and that's in the Austin Powers movie, like where he um, when he's with a a lot of vagina, and and his whole look is meant to look like the Peter 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 Sellers, Sellers and yeah, yeah. yeah, So the like thick glasses and the mop of hair, and (laughs) yeah, it's great. Um, The Odyssey of getting that specific. James Bond movie made was so fascinating where it's like, well, we can make all the other ones, but we can't make this one because some random dude has the rights to it mm-hmm. somewhere. But And like film rights are just absolutely stupid, crazy, nonsense. insane nonsense yeah. anyway. But like that specific story of just <laughs> why they couldn't make, they could make every other Bond yeah. film and there's what, you said 26 of them or whatever the hell, well, but like Casino like, Royale was, no. Yeah, and aren't there like still like five Fleming Bond novels that have not been adapted we will actually get to that oh uh, so with that we're so good at this podcast okay. <laughs> with that okay casino royale comes out 2006 was the highest grossing film in the franchise now pierce brosnan was popular and every one of his movies just like started making more and more money die another day was the biggest and then casino royale so that's still that's pretty crazy considering how much people were just going, oh, Daniel Craig, who's this guy? Yeah. You know? um, hashtag not my bond. Yeah. Uh, or whatever. Was that a hashtag? Hashtags didn't really exist Oh, yeah. Then. I forgot this was the before times. <laughs> the before times. Yeah. This was when everything was better on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Kind of. <laughs> I mean, the whole whole thing was craignotbond.com. <laughs> Oh, that was the original hashtag? With no, 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 it's not a hashtag. It was just a website. No, I know. No, I'm saying that the, a, a, a dot com was the original hashtag. <laughs> a website. Not my bond dot com. <laughs> yeah. You had to say dot com at the end of every sentence. <laughs> Instead of hashtag before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start doing that now. Instead of hashtag not my bond. Like... I mean, debomb.com, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do people say hashtag debomb now? 
instead of thebomb.com. It's just not as catchy. It's not as catchy. No. That's terrible. Kids these days. Uh, okay. So producers Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson. Wait, her name really is Barbara Broccoli? Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, no, I remember you're saying that. Okay, but like that's just so much fun to so say. She, so yeah, she you know, is the, the, the Broccoli she, family? She yeah. is the daughter of Albert Broccoli, who's, who is the, one of the two people who set, set up Eon Productions. For, and yeah. all they do is make Bond films. That's right. all they do. That's, and invented Broccoli. Yes. Mm-hmm. And according to some random lore, from Albert Broccoli is that their family was the first to actually cultivate broccoli. Who knows if that's actually true? Mm. Not in to be confused in like Italy with the somewhere? very famous cauliflower. Family. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Harry cauliflower. They were rivals. That was the original, like Romeo and Juliet, <laughs> right? Yeah, they were the Hatfields broccoli, and, Hat, the Hatfields the broccoli. and McCoys yeah. Yeah. of food. The green on whites. <laughs> it was the. <laughs> the broccolis and the cauliflowers. <laughs> French and Italian. Oh my God, we're 20 minutes in. I'm on two bullet points. Sir, <laughs> sir, how dare you criticize the way we conduct ourselves on this podcast? The broccoli. Okay. We can make all well, the dumb jokes we want. Let's remember Albert Broccoli. Okay. <laughs> um, so they announced, they're, they, they took over Eon Productions. They're both, uh, she's the daughter of Albert Broccoli and Michael uh, G. Wilson is married to his other daughter. So there are there are in-laws. They are not married to each other. Gotcha. Wait, um, okay. Announced plans for a sequel to Casino Royale as um, the production of that film wrapped um, and said it would be a direct sequel, So, which no Bond film has ever done before. So that's kind of like this big deal because none of the Bond films ever connect. I mean, they have like the hidden presence of Blofeld or Spectre, but they never really, they never reference other films and they never explain why Bond is replaced by different actors, yet Q still gets older. Like they never did any of that. So yeah. it's just became this this trope of just kind of like a stage play, just someone else, new actors, right? Mm-hmm. And then, um, so Neil Purvis and Robert Wade wrote the original draft um, for the sequel, and they wrote The World Is Not Enough, Die Another Day, and Casino Royale. So hoping to replicate the success of Casino Royale, um, they took Neil uh, Purvis's and Wade's script, and then they gave it to Paul Haggis, who uh, did like Crash, um, wrote and directed Crash, um, to polish the script. So they did it again. Um, they were like, hey, this worked so well, let's let's give it to him again. However, Haggis was busy finishing his film in the Valley of Ela and was pulling double duty. So he was like, I'm editing my film, trying to finish this up, and then I guess I'll work on this, right? Mm-hmm. So he was kind of not fully engaged Stretched in doing too thin. it. <laughs> yes. And then Mark Forrester um, signs on as the director. He directed Monster's Ball, Finding Neverland, uh, Stranger Than Fiction, my personal favorite movie of all time, Aww. but let's not get into that. Um, and he had just finished Kite Runner. Not exactly known for his action films. Right. Right. They're like um, all like slow dramas. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he's known for these indie films. And this is actually not that rare. They did. They do tend to hire uh, people who are just good storytellers. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Forrester mentions how he he read uh, a thing about Orson Welles that when he was he, uh, like on his deathbed, he said he regretted never making a big studio film, like uh, like a big like blockbuster. Hmm. Like he just did his own indie stuff that yeah. he was doing. And um, then like begrudgingly fucked up everyone else's movies that he didn't want to be in, like <laughs> right? an absolute monster. Yeah, he, he was a monster. Well, speaking I, of, yeah. I don't know. Speaking he was... of the original Casino Royale. I mean, he, <laughs> yes. I, mean I was going to say that. Yes. But... I mean, he was he was the voice of Unicron. Oh, from Transformers. his last role. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a that's he, a blockbuster. Yeah, you did it, Ors- Orson. Yeah. You did it. Yeah. He recorded it in bed, probably. Yeah, he yeah. sounded like it. <laughs> um, and it was like his last what like twenty years of his career was re- doing things from a bed or a chair. Yeah, just don't. I don't want to move. He pulled the the, the cl- a classic Brando. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so Forrester wanted to give it a try. He's like, I'll do an action film. And Jenny Ray, you will be our Mark Forster. Ah, oh, Mark Forster. Who is a German filmmaker. It's not like I was a big fan of Bond movies, but I met with Barbara and Michael and they had interesting ideas. And then I met with Daniel and I thought, okay, I can make a good movie with him. 
So, yeah, like, yeah, it's fine. Uh, Bond movies, whatever. Yeah. All right, fine. He has a handsome face. I you like know, his haircut very much. <laughs> you know, my, my history with Bond is very similar to yours. Like, my brothers all grew up on Bond movies, and they knew them all frontwards and backwards. But, but my the very first CD I ever bought was the GoldenEye soundtrack. <laughs> and I loved GoldenEye. That's so, that is such a... That, that was your that first is, CD? That and the soundtrack oh. to Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> That's much better, <laughs> Randy Newman, because the, the soundtrack to GoldenEye is the only thing that really dates that movie like really bad. Yeah. Mu- music in that movie is terrible. <laughs> it's just like, I'm going to use one synthesizer for this scene. I was just going to say, I bet it's all synth music. <laughs> no, it is. It truly is. <laughs> and then from then on, from after that, David Arnold um, took over, and he did the rest of the Brosnans, and then the next two Craig movies. Right. So he did Casino Royale and Quantum. There's mm-hmm. a there's a song, there's a track on the Goldeneye um, soundtrack called "Ladies First, and it's the little car chase he has with the mm-hmm. uh, um, Zenya. Mm-hmm. The guy from Seinfeld? <laughs> <laughs> he just did that one song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to write uh, sitcom stingers, but and they hired me to do this Bond movie. All right, car chases. <laughs> so, okay, so Forrester is like, he's not, he's not looking, to, he just wanted to make a big budget movie and see how it went. And, um, I watched. I was watching an interview between him and uh, Craig, and they were just kind of talking to each other. And they love each other. They were like big fans of each other. And um, and Forrester said that like he, what really actually grabbed him is that he loved how much of character they put into Casino Royale because Bond never had character arcs. He never did. And so this was kind of interesting. And so he wanted to tap into that and continue it. And Broccoli said that they were more interested in a great storyteller anyway. Right. So it didn't matter. She's like, we can help with the action stuff. We know how, we've been doing it for decades. We know how to do it. Um, According to Forrester, he and Haggis, Paul Haggis, worked together on the script Starting from scratch. So I keep thinking of like, haggis and haggis and broccoli. Yeah, people like like let's just they just get a bunch of people whose names are food that people like hate. People, yeah. yeah, and our partner Black Licorice. Yeah. I love that guy. <laughs> He's an acquired taste. Yeah. Um, not everyone's into Black Licorice. <laughs> uh, haggis. Um, he handed his draft in just before the writer's strike of 2007, 2008. And was um, in right before they were, like before the writer's strike was about to start. And Broccoli likes to joke that he handed, <laughs> handed her the script, grabbed his paycheck, and then picked up his picket sign. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> um, whether or not any of that <laughs> lines up, but... Um, I like to think that's how it happened. Yeah. Um, and but he also turned down the uh, they asked him if he wanted to direct um, Bond 22, as it was called at the time. So which brings us to the titles of all of Ian Fleming's novels and short stories. Only four titles have yet to be used for a movie. Um, and, you know, some of them were made up uh, like one of them was Octopussy and the Living Daylights. And so they kind of split into two. Mm-hmm. Like I said, Goldeneye was not actually one of his books whatever Hmm. so the four that weren't used the hillebrand rarity (laughs) the property of a lady oh resisco (laughs) resisco (laughs) okay and quantum of solace now Uh, yeah that's an obvious choice (laughs) the stories like the short stories are kind of really random so the short story of Quantum of Solace is an entirely Bond at a dinner party listening to a story about a married couple and where um, this guy is just telling him about this wife who cheats on her husband and the husband gets revenge by saddling her with all his debt. But mm. then his revenge never makes him feel whole again. <laughs> like and that's the whole fucking story. It's just like a really short story. Per Fleming in the book. When the quantum of solace drops to zero, humanity and consideration of one human for another is gone. <laughs> that is so eloquent that I don't understand I a don't, fucking word. I know. <laughs> I need to go think about that for a couple of days and then That's you know very come British. back to it. <laughs> okay. Well, I like the short story. Okay, Bond's at a dinner party where someone is just 
throw in some shade. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but that's the thing, though, is that, like, that's the parts of the movie they don't show you. Like, being a spy is probably real fucking boring yeah, sometimes. Yeah, lots of... Like, you gotta be at, like, state events and just be, like, pretending to give a shit about what people are telling you <laughs> while you're, like, simultaneously scanning the room for terrorists or whatever the hell. Like... It's a it's lot of intel gathering. It's a lot of awkward That's social probably, interactions. Yeah. That's why I'm not a spy personally, because I just <laughs> I can't I can't make small talk. He's probably there at that dinner party, like staking out somebody else, and then just like in the on like the same table is just these people that are talking about it. He's probably just like, Jesus Christ. Like all right. I <laughs> no, get the it. drunk is sitting next to mm-hmm. him. And let me tell you another yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in debt. <laughs> <laughs> so much debt. As my, my, my bitch wife she's cheating on me. It's, uh, so I'm guess gonna, what? I showed her. <laughs> I'm gonna saddle her with all that debt and a saddle. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, someone needs to make this now. Yeah. I need to see this. Let's all right, uh, Clint, you will be our Daniel Craig, and this is uh, Craig on the title. I, I'm, it's going to be very posh British because I can't do a Daniel Craig because he's like he like like Pierce Brosnan exudes like sexiness in his appearance. <laughs> I feel like Daniel Craig exudes sexiness in his Bond voice. I can't do that. Where okay. is he? Mine's Where... more like Eliza Doolittle. So. That's that, no, that's fine. It's grown on me. I was sure if, I wasn't sure at first. Bond's looking for his quantum of solace, and that's what he wants. He wants his closure. Ian Fleming says that if you don't have a quantum of solace in your relationship, then the relationship is over. It's that spark of niceness in a relationship that if you don't have, you might as well give up. <laughs> I kind of did a little bit of Michael Caine there. The yeah, that's say. a little Caine. But uh, so that's how he was won over. Um, and as Michael Wilson said, it's better than picking a title just because it has the word die in it. <laughs> yeah, die another day. Mm-hmm. At least Quantum of Solace evokes the spirit of Ian Fleming's writing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I guess. Like so, and then, it, but then they have no time to die. <laughs> it encapsulates the theme of the story, well, basically the short story. Of, yeah, well, let's be honest. In Ian Fleming's heyday, as a very popular writer, all of his audience, like his readers, now are all dead. <laughs> yeah. Nobody right. cares. Yeah, so you get like people of our generation who grew up on Goldeneye who are now super excited for stuff like No Time to Die. I have never read a Bond book in <laughs> yeah. my life. And yeah. I can't I don't think I can pick out one single person in my like circle of, you know, friends mm-hmm. and family who likes Bond who has ever read a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, it, yeah, one of their novels. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. No, I'm just saying like real books. Like no one reads anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true too. Uh Columbia Pictures called it not the slickest title. <laughs> but was won over by the fact that it would be easy to insert 007 in the graphic design. Yeah. <laughs> so for them, because that's good for international, because the 007 is so international, like everybody knows it right. when you see it. Yep, yep. That makes sense. <laughs> so silly, though. <laughs> it's better than those other options. Did they see the other options? I mean, listen. Property of a lady. Property of a lady. Yeah. and there's Not, but <laughs> not the Hillebrand rarity. Yeah. The Hill- <laughs> The Hildebrand that's, rarity. That's very British. That sounds yeah. like a like a show that comes on after Antique Roadshow. It's yeah, like a Downton it's, Abbey. It's like a brand of like marmalade. <laughs> I'll have a nice teaspoon of Hildebrand rarity mm. on my biscuits. <laughs> Hildebrand rarity goes down smooth. <laughs> um, okay, so all involved agree that the script wasn't fully ready yet when it was handed in. But they couldn't rewrite it because of the, the writer strike. And then there was fear of the Actors Guild also striking. Mm. So Eon Productions um, said, let's just go because who knows how long it would be before they could start again. And um, understand that, like, for me, I'm always just like, just delay it, right? Just wait a little bit. Whatever. Oh, man, but, if they only knew. <laughs> yeah, right. If they <laughs> only knew. If they only knew. <laughs> but, it was, but at the same time, it's kind of like... Eon Productions, this is all they do. This yeah. is their people's jobs. Like so They have to make bond films <laughs> yeah. or they'll die. <laughs> they don't they don't have a job. People don't eat broccoli anymore. No one gives a <laughs> yeah. shit about broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so filming begins in early January two thousand eight. They filmed in six countries UK, Italy, Mexico, Panama, Chile, and Austria which is very bond to go to all the exotic locales. Yeah. That's kind of their thing. Um, That's one reason why I love those movies. It feels like I'm on vacation. (laughs) 
Okay, so Craig felt that when he did Casino Royale, he was very free and blissfully ignorant. He was just like, cool, I'm Bond, let's get it done. Yeah. Like, yeah. everybody made fun of me, oh, I'm just going to get it done. Right. Um, but by the time they started Quantum, the magnitude of the role had taken on, uh, that the role that he had taken on was fully on his shoulders, and he felt his por- his performance suffered for it. Like, he was mm. just so, like, in his head while he was making Quantum. Like, am he's... I being Bond enough? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or he's probably just looked moody, right? And just yeah. kind of annoyed. Um, so this is the next Craig quote, and I'm going to put a language warning in front of this. <laughs> that um, this uh... is... We do swear on a podcast, if if you haven't noticed. Um, but there's going to be a word in here that uh, <laughs> I never use in my personal life. Um, oh, I use it all the time. It's one of my favorites. Uh, he is a very British person, and uh, British people use this word a lot. Oh, you're going to uh, make me read this? Yes. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so you can do it in a regular voice if you want. I'll I'll read I'll read the c word. That's a good thing my wife doesn't listen to this podcast. Do, do you do you want to read it? I'll read it. I'll, I'll no, say no, he it. Should, I never really get should, a chance to um, say it. <laughs> this is your one chance to say it, and it's okay. You're reading a quote. Oh no, it's gonna this break open the dam. <laughs> right. This is basically documentary film. You're a journalist at this point. Yeah, okay? That's true. Yeah, this I gotta keep up my journalistic your, integrity. Your journalistic integrity. Yeah, okay. But I but also if you feel uncomfortable, you can just pause and I'll say the word. No, I, I'll. <laughs> I'm with Ian. I don't like this word. I don't like to say it, but given the opportunity, why not? <laughs> we'll give you permission. Okay. All right. We did Quantum of Solace, which was a bit of a shit show to say at least. To, to say ding, the ding, least. Ding, 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 is just like, come on, it's James Bond. Enjoy yourself. Let's have a good time. I mean, I'm still a moody. That's the word of the day. <laughs> he is referring to himself, though. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Again, and journalistic integrity. Um, so he basically was hating life. Um, and he did a he because he hated how famous he was. He's like, you, you nothing could prepare you for people taking pictures outside of your front window. Ugh, yeah, and um. And so he did a play with Hugh Jackman and he kind of, Jackman kind of taught him how to accept fame. Yeah. And mm. did he sing? <laughs> yeah. He, sang. Um, <laughs> he talks about, they talk about like uh, that even Hugh Jackman's wife calls her, calls him uh, Senator Jackman because <laughs> he's just so personable to everybody. Like yeah. he seems mm. like he's, he's always tries to be on everybody's good side. Um, that's and that's thing. not Daniel Craig. He's yeah. like in. He was like it. It took me. It. Barbara Broccoli told him. It's like you're not Hugh. Like and that's fine. And he's like, that's a good point. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, he's a moody. <laughs> that's okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we're... look, girl. I feel you. I'm also that way. <laughs> well, it's the that's, that's the trouble. Like the, you hear all the time with celebrities when they're cast into these roles or into these franchises that. How could you give up that? How could you pass up that opportunity? Yeah. But at the same time, just know this is going to change, change your, life. your life. Yeah. Basically, production just was kind of hard because of the, the lack of script. And um, here is another Craig quote. Go ahead. On Quantum, we were fucked. We had the bare bones of a script. And then there was a writer strike. And there was nothing we could do. We couldn't employ a writer to finish it. I say to myself, never again, but who knows? There was me trying to rewrite scenes and a writer I am not. I'm a moody <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh we did it. Oh, do you uh, not condone this? <laughs> you didn't read that last, you're, you read that last quote in, your, in a regular accent, by the way. Oh, I did? Yeah. Oh, well. It's fine. <laughs> and a writer I am not. <laughs> okay, but that's a good point. Is So per the Writers Guild rules, they, um, Forrester and Craig, they're allowed to rewrite their dialogue because they're on set um, and they, they know can, the characters. Like, yeah. Yeah. And so they, they're they allowed to do anything most. And obviously it's very easy to change dialogue, but they're like, <laughs> but we still are set to shoot in this location. Yeah. So we have to make whatever we say work here. Right. <laughs> oh, it's so cold here in Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but they struggled. 
they it was not the easiest and because craig felt he wasn't helping much with the writing because he's just like i i don't do this um and the stunt crew thought Craig was very game and uh, built for stunts. <laughs> um, he kind of overcompensated by doing as many stunts mm. as possible. Tom Cruise, he is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And <laughs> and and keep in mind, he also started when he was forty <laughs> doing stunts. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, man! Um, That's when you need the stunt guy from Back to the Future who just wandered onto the set. Hey, you stunt guy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, okay, I'm he gonna... was forty when he started these movies. Yeah, how right. fucking old is he now? Fifty-two. Or oh something my god! Like um, so he starts doing all these stunts. At some point, a door is slammed onto his finger oh. and it cuts off the tip of it, <gasps> um, which is actually not like that big of a deal. It's like something like a cook would do, right? But it, yeah, it, like how much? Sure, is I a mean tip? I've done that. Yeah, before. and he was like, he was like, he was like, it was just a pad. It was nothing serious. Yeah. But the press were like, oh my god, he lost a finger. He <laughs> lost the whole finger. Yeah, was it like, was his gold finger. <laughs> yeah. Gold <laughs> finger. <laughs> now let's check off how many times we can get all the Bond titles off. Oh, uh, challenge accepted. Well, we got at least three. We got octopus. In there. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was kicked in the face during a fight sequence, and Ooh. during the chore- choreography, he forgot to duck, <laughs> and the guy kicked him <laughs> right in the cheekbone, um, and it split open his cheekbone, oh. and it required eight stitch- <gasps> stitches, and, a bl- and it gave him a black eye, and they digitally removed it throughout the film. Was a doctor oh that God. stitched him up, Doctor No? <laughs> up top. Wait, hold on, that was a bad. <laughs> Oh God! Why um, am I so bad at this? There you go. There go. I'll let you high five me. There. <laughs> yeah. Here, I'll, I'll be stationary. There you go. Look right. at your elbows. <laughs> um, okay. Now, during the airplane chase, um, there's a part where he the the plane goes completely vertical, and then uh, Bond jumps out from the cockpit and like rolls down the thing. So there's a part in that that's actually Craig, and he fell bashing his right shoulder and tearing the connecting cartilage in his shoulder. Um, then he bashed it again, jumping through a window, and finally jumping between the two buildings, he crashed into the wall. Ugh. So by the end of the Smushing film- Smushing his face. That's his money maker. I know, but it's also, again, this right shoulder. Because oh. like, if you see, that's what oh, mostly yeah, yeah, takes yeah, the yeah. impact. Yeah. That's um, true. That's true. And by the end of the film, he said, my arm was kind of useless. Oh. And... I think like the stunt coordinator would be like, hey, Craig, Daniel, when you jump- <laughs> Danny boy. Make sure that you aim for the doorway <laughs> and not the wall of this balcony. I think if you look at it closely, it's like it looks like they they faked the wall with padding. Mm. Oh yeah, but still, still yeah, like that's a lot. Yeah. It was a high jump, and the stunt coordinator said, "Daniel, listen, this is no time to die. I need you. <laughs> I need you to aim for the not the not the hard cement, the soft padding when you do <laughs> yes. the jumps. Yep." Um, so he had to have surgery on the shoulder after the film was done. He promoted the entire film in an arm sling um, because uh, his arm was just wow. kind of gone. Because his arm gone. Uh, Keep in mind, this was only a second one, and we're going to get to the ones later. Um, one of the biggest criticisms of Quantum is that it seemed to be aping the Bourne movies um, with the frantic camera and quick cuts yes. um, right. that made it hard to tell what was going on. Oddly enough, Quantum had the same second unit director of Bourne's, uh, Bourne 2 and 3, <laughs> Dan uh, Bradley. That makes and sense. And so last time we talked about second units, they mainly do the action stuff. Right. So there you go. Goal shaky cam, what's his face? Yeah. yeah. What's Dan, that guy's name? Dan Bradley. Okay, now, the opening car chase. We're going to keep going back to this. So we, wa- we watched this before yeah. we started. Mm-hmm. Um, the opening car chase. Daniel Craig was not on set at all for any of it. He was never oh. there. Uh, everything you see of him was filmed in a studio with a blue screen. Whoa. A nice, safe studio. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> he's like, his shoulder's gone. <laughs> Let's just put him in a blue screen. He did not have a license to kill him. Uh, try. <laughs> Keep it. Keep in mind, we're gonna we're gonna actually go into a bunch of of the other movies. Don't right, ruin okay. this game. This is a fun all right, game. All right, fine. <laughs> you wanna, you okay. Want, you want to share the screen here? Right? I do. Yeah. It's all right over here. You can just. Uh... All right. Let me see. Don't don't force it. I want to make sure you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stay okay, involved. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. So so Craig was not on set, but Dan Bradley 
our shaky cam man, uh, he was on set and he would shoot plate footage of where Craig and the car would be digitally inserted. Mm. So every time, like, when he's, like, ramming against the truck or the other cars, like, it's just a car pretending to run into something. Um, that which sounds like a, a lot of fucking work. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. car's a great actor. Um, the guy charged with getting the fancy Aston Martins to set mm -hmm. uh, couldn't resist the chance of driving these cars to set oh, no. <laughs> instead of towing them. Um, so he uh, got into one of those Aston Martins, the one from the beginning of the movie that Bond drives. <laughs> Um, so he decided to drive it himself um, along that same road that you see at the beginning of the chase. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that's uh, Lake Garda. And he slipped <gasps> on the winding road and drove through a railing <gasps> into the lake. <gasps> um, and he, uh, the same one, the very opening shot, that's the same lake that he falls into. Uh, he blacks out. And wakes up to find the cars upside down <laughs> and filling with water. Oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> um, he does get out in time. <laughs> like, he, he opens the door or whatever. He gets out. And it was just getting all muddy. And if you watch uh, uh, Mythbusters, remember that it's uh, just wait until it fills up. And then you can open the door easily. Mm. Um, but he, he got out. He was completely fine. But he was fined 400 euro. <laughs> yeah. And he said, not today. I'll die another day. Thanks. You. <laughs> Thank you very much. Take my 400 euros. Um, okay. On a more serious note, uh, two stunt drivers were seriously injured during that opening car chase via some mistake that isn't quite clear. Um, they haven't really said exact what exactly what happened, but one of the stunt drivers drove headfirst into a truck. Ugh. Now I showed then that in the opening that scene, that shot is in there. That might not be it. It might be it because okay. I've one one story I read said it was that was kind of the planned idea. Uh -huh. Another one said it ran into um, a crew truck. So mm. I'm not sure mm. what is the actual story. But like it's all digital. I anyway. am not surprised that stunt drivers were hurt based on watching that. That shit was crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, you need to watch <laughs> Fast and Furious movies. <laughs> um, yeah. I but, will never. <laughs> okay. So but when they're doing these kinds of um stunts, they have a helicopter on hand mm -hmm. to make sure that like if anything crazy happens, they can life fly them out of there. One of them um, one of them is relatively okay. The other, Arias Caminos, um, he was instantly like, "This guy needs to go to the hospital." Oh no! He gets in, he gets to the, he gets airlifted almost immediately. He's in the hospital in like 15 minutes. Um, goes into a coma. Um, I'm not sure how long, but he does come out of it and made a full oh. recovery. Yeah. Whew. But that story blew up because they were like, yeah, "Oh my yeah, god, yeah. someone right? probably almost died." Right. Um. While filming in Chile, a very angry local mayor drove his car right onto set, <laughs> slamming his brakes a few <laughs> feet from the camera crew, and he got out, started yelling at the crew. Um, and then the, the film crew were like, okay, let's just let him, whatever he's yelling yeah, about. Yeah. Right. Um, and then the cops came and arrested him. Um, he was protesting that the film- The mayor? The, a mayor of like a, 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 a town nearby. Oh, okay. So it wasn't like that town. Um, <laughs> like, why I, are you not just shooting into my town? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, guess, I was going to say, I guess cops can arrest the mayor. Yeah. Like, yeah that you, kind of not hurt on they, they have a license or they have a license to film. So cool. Uh, the mayor was there protesting that the film was using Chile as a fill in for Bolivia. Mm. Um, so in the film, they're all, it, it's never in Chile. They're in Bolivia. Um, those two countries have a very complicated history mm. of violence since the War of the Pacific in the late uh, late 1800s over uh, land rights over the coast. And um, they have not forgiven each other no. since. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a real live and let die sort of, uh, <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> um, so... After all this press, just, just all these stories just keep coming up. The shit just keeps coming out. Um, there was like a really funny interview where uh, someone's asking Daniel Craig, did this happen? No. Did this happen? No. <laughs> did this happen? Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so it kind of got out of control. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
after all this, uh, Forrester saw one of the major downsides of making a major blockbuster. Okay, let's see. Uh, it's much nicer to work under the radar. To be constantly scrutinized and under such microscopic observation is really not so much a pleasure. <laughs> um, Forrester downplays a lot of these issues while filming. Uh, he called it smooth. <laughs> I don't know everything that we just mentioned. I would yeah. call smooth, but um, <laughs> it went fine. I don't know what you're all talking about. It's very smooth. <laughs> this is it happens all the time on our German films. <laughs> um, Even the shake cam is smooth. <laughs> <laughs> it was smooth, and, and, I, and then in the edit, I made it shaky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy Dan Bradley was like, he's like, God damn it! I am I am known for having the smoothest camera hand in Hollywood. <laughs> Fucking shit. Um. <laughs> So Forrester said that the script was actually at a good place when they started. And when the strike was over, he hired another writer to help um, with some of the dialogue. But that's about it. Yeah. Um, he seems a very affable guy. Everything <laughs> seen... was fine. We hired another writer. It was very smooth. <laughs> he, he's definitely not that kind of German. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> so uh, Forrester only had six weeks to edit the film. Six weeks? <laughs> yeah, six weeks to edit that's Bond insanity. film worth six months of footage. <laughs> That's insanity. And this is what he said about it. There was just way t- <laughs> there was just way too little time. That kind of stress, I'm not really used to it. I don't ever want to do that again. <laughs> yeah, no shit. So the opening car chase, going back to it, originally had three cars chasing Bond. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Forrester felt it was too long of a sequence. So he edited it out one of the cars out so it only seemed like two were chasing him okay i don't know how you do that um but in some cases that required them to digitally remove <laughs> the a, ca- car? a car Man, Look, that's complicated. Uh, just re-watching that just now and how like quick some of those cuts were yeah. I, I i wouldn't i, I couldn't have told I, you I, if there was yeah. five cars <laughs> exactly. seven cars 12 cars i don't know it was, it was a fuck ton of cars so a lot of times we talk about like white big movies um cost so much like why why it costs so much to make them and then uh why it um why do product placements exist okay to give you an idea of why this is the brands that you would see brands like smirnoff omega watches avon sony ericsson which are all featured in there um in quantum um they all agree to do millions of dollars of marketing for the film if it releases at the time they agreed to do, mm-hmm. right? And any delay would run into their other contracts they have going on, other marketing campaigns that they're 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 uh, scheduled to run. So that's why you just have all these fucking people coming at them, and they're like, "No, you have to you have to release it when we say you do." And yeah. so it becomes this stupid mess. I'm not saying it's an excuse. It's just a reason why movie big movies like have that problem. Right, because there's all kind of agreements and contracts and stuff that you're beholden to, even though it's just like, well, what the fuck does like a watch company need that marketing at that specific time? Just yeah, like, exactly. It's like, everybody calm down. Yeah. Calm so, down. So then you take, um, uh, because of No Time to Die, which was mm-hmm. delayed two years, right. right? They had to go in and digitally replace the Nokia phones in the film because they were outdated. Now you think about it, like Holy usually shit. a movie comes out a year after they filmed it, right? Yeah. So they're using the top of the line at that time, but right. by the time the f- movie No Time to Came Out, it's like three years. Oh my god! Right. So the mo- the Nokia phones that they're using the movie are like, yeah, I have one of those. Like I just gave one to my kids, you know. Versus yeah. Yeah, yeah, shit, yeah. we need to advertise yeah. the newest, latest one. So they had to digitally and go in there and change all of them. They What's changed that? them all to Motorola razors. Yeah. <laughs> <is> so <laughs> sick. Was Q using an iPhone five? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Just de- just go back. Actually, I would say the one thing that kind of dates uh, uh, the the first few Bond movies are their uh, dumbass the, phones. The, the phones. <laughs> Other than that, like they hold up, but just, like their cell phones are which, the which really the really blocky version yeah. of the smartphones before they became real smartphones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, which is insane because like it's that was like what two thousand and eight, two thousand six, and uh, Quantum oh, yeah. was. 2008. Uh, I guess that was like when I was in high school and I did have like a weird big dumb phone. And was <laughs> rocking a was Blackberry. Like, there was a, an antenna you had to pull out. It, you, yeah. Kids. It was crazy. It was pull crazy the back then. then. flip open the... The little bottom the little, piece. Yeah. yeah. I had that phone in high school. Oh, let me send a text. <laughs> <laughs> That's the letter S. <laughs> 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 
That's yeah. the letter E. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Back in the day. Um, okay. Quantum of Solace was released November 14th, 2008 in the U.S. Usually it opens in um, the U.K. first um, because that's their pride and joy. That's their Superman, as mm-hmm. you said. Mm-hmm. Um, Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 64%. Uh, critics and then I haven't been doing this so I should start saying these um, what the audience percentage is um, because I do put that in the video it is kind of an interesting stat even though most people aren't the greatest of critics they'll just go oh they swore in it one star yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, and you're yeah. like you're like that's not ah. a val- you can't a six out of ten something like you can't <laughs> you don't do the extremes um, so 64 by critics 58 by audience so that tips over the rotten <laughs> and uh, fresh scale on Man, Rotten They just tomatoes. like to moon rake them over the coals, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I don't think that counts because you have to say moon raker. Oh, damn. Those yeah. okay, moon rakers <laughs> <laughs> over the coals. We did it. <laughs> it's Thunderball up in here. There's no rules. <laughs> Uh, that was going to be a hard one. I'm glad you did it. Thanks. <laughs> felt, felt like I just, just you know, it felt like good a good luck opportunity. Good keeping it in the edit. Um. <laughs> As the editor of this and seeing how I have seven weeks, which is more they ha- than they had for this movie, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to keep the joke. One week. Um, okay. I mean, hey, you only live twice. <laughs> you only edit twice. <laughs> um, okay, so the box office was... 168 million US and worldwide 589 worldwide. Um, 589 million worldwide. Uh, guesses on the budget, Jenny Ray. I'm so bad at this. Um, hmm. Okay, we actually, before we go there, Casino Royale made 167 million US. So Quantum made one extra million, <laughs> but it made 616 million worldwide. So it Casino Royale made more on a budget of 150 million. Quantum cost 400 million. Oh, Jesus, I don't know. I, was I told you I'm bad like at this. 275. Ooh, that's high too. Uh, budget of 230 million. Okay, so a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was made about the exact same amount of money, but cost way more. Mm-hmm. Um, the producers do admit that the story didn't follow Bond well enough. Uh, that it it was a little too heavy handed and I wonder if and that I wonder if it suffered that because it's a, it was a direct sequel starting without a script probably doesn't help yeah yeah like, <laughs> let's do a direct sequel okay what are we gonna do wow. uh. <laughs> yeah chases right. just lots of chases <laughs> look the farthest we got is that that one guy Mr White is still in the movie <laughs> yeah he's in the that's car that's what we got he's in <laughs> the back yeah. of the trunk. so far all we know is Go. that he's on Her Majesty's Secret Service <laughs> that's all we got so far um, okay. <laughs> Uh, random fun stat here. Uh, University in New Zealand wanted to determine via numbers if movies were getting more violent. So uh, they used James Bond series as a gauge. Again, film royalty has been around for decades, right? Yeah. So they considered everything in a movie from trivial to severely violent acts. That could be slapping someone to killing someone yeah. mm-hmm. or uh, firing a gun. How many acts slash moments do you think Dr. No contained? I'm going to um, wager a guess of four. I'm mm-hmm. going to say 15. Well, it was Sean Connery, and he does like to slap women. <laughs> yeah, he's he gets he's real slap happy, that guy. 109. Whoa. <laughs> we are really bad at this game. Let's go back to the other game where we just yeah, say right? the titles. This yeah. game right. is hard. Quantum of Solace is the most violent Bond film. Oh, shit. So per their uh, numbers. But it doesn't even have but... the nutsack roping in it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> lot of, a lot of... <laughs> Did you count every single nutsack rope? Oh, absolutely. Yes, just yes. A... Yeah, okay. you would do it, yes. Every time the rope ball comes in contact with the nutsack is one act of violence. <laughs> okay, all right. I didn't know the whole nutsack scene was just kind of violence. Was one. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, how many do you think in Quantum? So if Dr. No, <laughs> the first Bond film in 61, had 109. And 100 of those are just Sean Connery slapping Stop. women. <laughs> Which that's why you were off, because you were like, I don't consider that violence at all. No, I was counting how many times he slaps a guy. What a 109 in Dr. No, mm-hmm. Quantum of Solace has the most. 
Oh, I'm going to say it's like 700. I'm going to go with the same number that I thought the budget was and say 400. <laughs> 250. Oh, gee, that, I'm way see, off. What, <laughs> we should have gone, see, we should have gone with the number that was the actual budget of the movie. About, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. They're like, this movie, for every act of violence, it's $1 million. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how their accountants put those budgets together. So I'm guessing based off of that, that would be that would have to be like for every punch. So if like a fist fight in a movie had Bond punching a guy ten times, that's ten acts. That's my guess. So okay, I think so. so yeah. So like then you, you via know, what you said, they're like the nutsack. Set, you can't punch him anymore. Yeah. We we don't have any more money. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, can we get one extra punch in this scene? There's like the bean counters like mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Shut I'm sorry, down. we Shut only have down. enough line items for ten punches for this scene. We've only budgeted that much. But the script says <laughs> Okay. So that's it for Quantum. Um but since when are we ever gonna have the chance to talk about Bond again? Um here's the history of injuries on Bond sets which is often called the curse of Bond, mm. which is what they constantly said during Quantum. Well, the yeah. curse of Bond. It's it's 20 what, 25 movies? Yeah. You're going to have e- exactly. There's no curse. <laughs> I mean, it's if just you... numbers. Yeah, yeah I was going to say like statistically and if you, it's going to happen. And if you consider the uh, the acts of violence, the increasing number of acts of violence in these movies, <laughs> yeah. of Quantum of Souls yeah. doubling. Yeah. yeah. Doctor also. No. Yeah, and and keep in mind these were like, I mean, these movies have always been like the hugest productions at the time and uh, the biggest sets and the biggest budgets. Yeah. So, and it's just, you know, creased over the years. Mm-hmm. Okay. From Russia with Love, 1963. Uh, three stuntmen were injured and actor Walter Gotel's eyelids were burned no. <laughs> during an explosion. Like so burned clean off? Like No, like just burned. Okay, yeah, I know. So I, thought, just... I thought the same thing when I read it. I was like, oh, God. Wow. Oh he's gonna, he's, what, he, what, did he, he play a villain? <laughs> yeah, he played the main villain. Oh, okay. So now like, if he like, returned, to be like no blink or something he's like that? He's seeing the living daylights all the time. <laughs> yeah, ooh, hey, hey, you're getting into it now. <laughs> you're loving this game, I too. Was, I was just going to say, when they came on set to, um, to, to fix his eyelids, they said, this is for your eyes only. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Good. All That's right. great. <laughs> okay. Um, there is a part in this, the movie uh, where a helicopter flies past Bond while he's sitting on the ground. And I kid you not, if you look at this, he's probably three feet from the helicopter as it Whoa. zoomed past him. It's a stunt man. It's not Sean Connery at the time, but like it's that close. Mm. That helicopter crashed into the lake. Oh, <laughs> Everyone was fine. Um, Daniela Bianche, um, she was the Bond girl, one of the Bond girls in it. Um, her driver who picked her up to take her to set, um, that day fell asleep and Mm. crashed (laughs) Uh, and they had minor, minor injuries. Also in a lake. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and was, there is no, there's a, there is a consistency a dis- with lakes. Maybe they should stay away from am- yeah. yeah lakes. A disturbing amount of lake crashes in this yeah. uh, series. Uh, Goldfinger, 1964. Sean Connery injured his back during a fight scene, and he used it to negotiate five percent gross of all Bond films. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Whoa. They're like, please don't sue us. Oh, God, please don't sue us. What, <laughs> yeah. what do you want? What do you, what, five, 5% fine. Just don't sue us. Which was probably oh. one of the biggest like, deals, like first time that's ever happened. Of all Bond films? I'm not sure about that. Oh, there, or just ones like, that Maybe he's, he's okay. done. Okay. Maybe the ones he's done, but it would make sense that he would be like, I'm part of this, yeah. so I'm just going to get all that. Yeah. Which, which is really weird to be like, oh, my God, Casino Run did so well. Oh, shit, got to make my check and send it to Sean Connery. Yeah. <laughs> like, got to give him a 5%. Okay, going back to your hat, your bowler hat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Harold uh, Sakata, who plays Oddjob. Um, so during his death, <laughs> he throws uh, he throws his hat, yeah. which cuts off heads. Who throws a shoe? <laughs> Honestly. Honestly. He throws his hat and it gets stuck between some uh, prison bars. And then he goes to retrieve it because it's metal, because it cuts off heads. He grabs the hat and then Bond puts a um, a live wire on the bars and it shocks him. But uh, uh, the actor, he was like holding on to, if you see him on his head, he's holding on to the thing and there's just all these sparks flying at his face. And he got too scared to let go. And he was like, I need to... I don't want to do this again. So I'm going to make sure the shot works. <laughs> and he, he got burned <laughs> all over his Whoa. face. Oh, no. Um, he was, 
He's fine now. How were, how were his eyelids? Were they okay? <laughs> Intact? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, you only live twice, uh, 1967. Uh, there's a helicopter chase in that. Actually, in this movie, he's where, he's doing one of those like weird helicopters where it looks more like a like a go kart with a blade on the top. Oh, yeah. You, oh, those you know, little those... like single person yeah. little helicopters. Exactly. Yeah, he's using one of those. Okay, so they have two. They have to have, have two helicopters. One that's <laughs> up in the sky and one shooting right uh, where the cameraman is. Cameraman John Jordan. Is on one of he's uh, on his own helicopter, and uh, the some movement happens, and his foot is sliced clean off. <gasps> Fuck. No. Okay, they retrieve it, they attempt to reattach it. Oh my but, god! But like, I guess the country they were in was like didn't <laughs> didn't do it very well. <laughs> So he had to, he was eventually they amputated. Put it, they put it on the same ankle, the <laughs> other ankle. It's just wrong ankle. They put it on the the sideways, backwards. Like what the hell? Like what do you mean they didn't attach it very well? Soidberg, <laughs> what's matter, Jordan? You got two left feet. Yes, <laughs> yes, I do. That's exactly what you did to me. <laughs> so okay, so his his leg was amputated. Three years later, unrelated, uh, John Jordan. Uh, is filming the film Catch-22, and they're shooting with military planes. He refuses to wear a harness while inside one of these military planes and falls 4,000 feet to his death. Oh, my God. Is this foot okay? Wait, that was the same guy? That was two same. left feet? Yeah, that was two left feet. And he was a stuntman? Yeah. Oh. No, no, no. He was a cameraman. Cameraman. He refused oh. to wear a harness and fell from this airplane well, to his death. I mean, that's sad, but he kind of sounds like a dumbass. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think he was a little brazen, yes. He took You Only Live Twice a little too literally. <laughs> yeah. And I know we already used You Only Live Twice, but I, I had to try and throw it in there. Some of these are getting harder, man. The world is not enough for what you guys need to do. <laughs> um, okay. Octopussy, 1983. So there's a, there's a sequence where they're on the side of a train. Bond gets out on the side of a train, and he's holding on to, like, the railing and, and scooting off. Mm-hmm. Uh, stuntman Martin Grace uh, was doing Bond, and uh, he there was mistiming, and he got out and was doing the side of the train and smashed into a concrete pole, shattering his pelvis and leg. Oh, <laughs> that's rough. Ooh. Um Goldeneye, 1995. Is it Famka Jansen? I think it's Famka. Famka? She plays the the evil Bond girl in that and also plays Jean Grey in mm-hmm. the X movies. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, so there's a sequence where uh, her and uh, Pierce Brosnan are kind of sexy fighting, where they're kind of like making out and and she's trying to kill him, but yeah, they're kind of like enjoying she bites it. his lip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I was ten when this came out. <laughs> yeah, she, 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 she made you me feel it. things, man. <laughs> yeah, you get it. You yeah. get it. It's like something. Something's happening in my pants. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling feelings. <laughs> <laughs> for yeah, uh, for real, dude. That's ten year old Clint. <laughs> <laughs> exactly how excited. So they're doing the sequence where he's kind of like she's kind of straddling him, and he's kind of they're inside of a spa, uh, like a bathhouse. Bathhouse, yeah. And so it's like marble walls and stuff like that. I totally and, remember Goldeneye, Quantum of Solace. Fuck, yeah, but yeah. Goldeneye. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So and he like he, there's a part where she just starts squeezing. Her whole thing is she kills people by squeezing with her hips. Yeah. And uh, her, her thighs. Her, her thighs, her thighs. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, crushes their, like, they can't breathe anymore. Right. And uh, sh- there's a part where he just kind of, like, throws her against the wall mm-hmm. to make her stop, and he was doing it too lightly. And so, and she was like, no, seriously, just throw me against the wall. And this the shot is in the film where he, was, like, smashes her against the wall, and she he broke her rib. Oh, my God. <laughs> but she, like, completely just stayed in character. Good, good for her. Die She's another... really getting into it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Die Another Day, 2002. Brosnan injured his shoulder, but it was just, like, this really minor thing. But Halle Berry had shrapnel from a smoke grenade lodged into her eyeball, <laughs> and it required surgery to be removed. Um she has no permanent damage. Oh my! So I must have missed like like her iris or something. I wouldn't like. call yeah. Catwoman no permanent damage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something happened that day with that shrapnel. From then on, she made terrible choices. <laughs> yeah. in, in in choosing roles. Yeah, she just wakes up. She's like, I am Catwoman. Yeah. <laughs> um, God bless her. That's 
horrifying. That is like that's in her terrifying. actual eyeball, like not to the like the side of her eye, like in her in actual her eyeball. eyeball. So it's probably like in the white of her eye. Yeah. Jeez, um, gross. So Casino Royale in two thousand six. Would you say that after that she had a golden eye? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had to have her eye replaced yeah, with yeah. a I mean, golden if you, eye. If you got the, an injury like that on a Bond film, yeah, and you had to replace your eye, yeah, what, uh, call yeah. that my golden eye. Give me a mm-hmm. yeah. Um, <laughs> That's what she calls it. It's my golden eye. <laughs> okay, so now we're in the Daniel Craig era. This is so he uh, everything that happens on set was generally okay. Um, uh, it for, was very smooth. Very smooth. Stop well, making up rumors for, about it. For Everyone keeps around. talking as if the sky was falling. <laughs> Skyfall. <laughs> it was not. So, so Daniel Craig <laughs> went through Casino Royale just fine. Clearly got himself fucked up on Quantum of Solace. Yeah. Right. Okay. Skyfall 2012. Early in, Craig ruptured both of his calf muscles. Oh. Um, oh. And uh, like, like he I like hate landed or something. Ruptured? <laughs> That is the worst word I've worst. ever heard to explain. Well, you hear like, you hear like rupture, you think like, like, oh, I, I ruptured like a vein, like a, a blood vessel yeah. in my eye, you know? It's like, like, or like, a bag of chips. Yeah. <laughs> it's like your calf <laughs> muscles. Yeah. Like, I just I'm, imagine like two water balloons on the yeah, back of your pop legs it. just popping. Yeah. Or, not, ooh, I don't like the bag. Of, I'm really not on board with the bag of chips analogy because it just like, just <laughs> air just, oh, God. <laughs> Terrible. Built up air in his calves. He was a he was a specter of a man after that. <laughs> yeah. He was never the same. That was gonna be a good. One. I was I was I was looking for that one. That's good. Okay, you guys are trying to get them before I get to yeah. those movie titles. Know, yes. Right? Yeah. Um, okay. So <laughs> this is the game. Um, during any downtime during that film, he had to be sitting in a swimming pool doing rehab to get his legs back oh. to normal. And at the time he was asked about it and he was like, the, it was the worst part wasn't whether or not you'd heal or not. He's like, time will definitely give you that. But he's like, what, what was the worst is the mental anguish of going back to set and Aww. going like, Oh my God, anything could happen. Right. Yeah. Like I could yeah. just undo all of this. Right. right? Okay. Then it gets real bad. <sighs> Spectre. 2015, during the no wing airplane chase, when he he's chasing with the plane and the 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 wings get knocked off by the trees. Oh, and they're like in the Alps. Mm-hmm. And this is the part I made you watch because there was like some yes. Range Rovers in there um, yes. running, and that's what the plane runs into. Right? right. Okay. Assistant director Terry Madden was pinned after a Range Rover lost control and smashed him between like a camera rig and the Range Rover. Oh my and God. Crushing <gasps> his legs entirely. Oh. Um, he sued Eon Productions for what he called like a career ending yeah. um, uh, accident. Was he like, was he not able to walk after that? I'm not sure. That's horrifying. I can't find anything about it, but they settled out of court um, for yeah. potentially millions. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh. Or maybe um, diamonds, because they're forever. <laughs> Not to undermine your injury, sir. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, of course. That's horrible. That's how they pay. That's how they pay everybody isn't diamonds, though. Um, <laughs> or golden guns. Yeah, golden <laughs> guns. He was a. Uh, he, he was a man he, with he it. He was a man with a golden gun. After that, so. Um, so early into shooting, um, during the train fight between him and Dave Batista. Right. Um, which is quite an awesome fight scene. <laughs> that that was pretty rad. It's it's actually a very um cool um homage to From Russia with Love. Mm. Uh, that movie is again very old <laughs> and kind of boring. But there is a train fight between uh, Connery and Robert Shaw that this is kind of like an homage to because they just oh, get into a fight and they're just breaking through walls and it's fucking furious and it still kind of holds up. Mm-hmm. Um, so during this fight. There's a part where Dave Batista is supposed to throw him from one. He's like pulled him up against the wall and then he turns around and throws him against the wall uh, the, on the other side. And Dave Batista was just kind of like lightly doing it. <laughs> and and Craig's like, come on, come on, just do it. Just like really throw me this time. And he's like not realizing that he's a, a goddamn monster of a man yeah. right a hope a um, of a man yeah and so he uh he threw him and craig tore his anterior cruciate ligament basically his knee as he says he heard it go boink oh that's not a good anyway, sound so that's only good his, for one thing yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Famke Jansen. Um, <laughs> um, so his knee would require surgery because it was that bad, and it would take nine months to recover from oh. it. So they've started filming. They've already like a couple months in. They're well right. into it. And, and he's like, that's nine months if you're like a 20-year-old athlete. Yeah. And yeah. He's in his 40, late 40s, right? Yes. And uh, you can die another day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, um, I stand up from sitting and my knee goes boink. <laughs> and I'm in my mid 30s. So I understand it completely. When I, yeah. Like, I, that's insane because I, I, I'm the same way. Like, I wake up in the morning and like, I just like move a little bit. <laughs> Every single joint in my back and arms and legs just yeah, like pop, exactly. pop, 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 pop. Yeah. And he's <laughs> reaching his 50s and yeah. this is, he's being thrown around by Dave Batista. <laughs> um, okay. So, he decides that if they did the surgery, like it would take, it would just delay the film for God knows how long, right? So he decided to power through it, oh, filming. So he had God. a knee brace the entire time. Um, he he figured tomorrow never dies. Um, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got him, man. We got him. He's into it now. We got him. Um, but. Remember when I January at the beginning of the film that yes. the single shot sequence and he's walking on the rooftop and you're like I love how he's just casually walking that and he keeps jumping down all yes. those levels right that he had his knee brace during that whole oh sequence my God. so most of that movie he has a knee brace and he's in fucking agony oh uh, like, but he looks so so chill <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. like he looks smooth like. James Bond should right but he did this whole movie with did a he just like fully dissociate he was just like. Ah, uh, like just zen? I don't, he, yeah, he was just like screaming on the inside. Um, <laughs> now I just, now I just want to take that, that one where he's walking on the rooftop and just replace it with, ah, just like yeah. have and that as a constant. running commentary. Yeah. yeah. Boink, boink, boink. Boink. <laughs> yeah, knee boinks. boinking sound. Um, uh, so, but when they returned to filming, uh, Craig <laughs> got a little payback, uh, and he uh, got a little too close to Batista, and he punched him right in the nose and broke his nose. Ah. Um, wow. Two days after filming Spectre, a reporter, okay, keep in mind what he was going through on Spectre, mm -hmm. two days after filming, a reporter asked Craig about doing another Bond film, and this was his reply. Now? I'd rather break this glass and slash my wrists. Because he's just like thinking about it right now. Like I never, never, yeah. right? Like just so... silent screaming on the inside. <laughs> yeah. So his knee gets fucked up. Did yeah. he ever actually end up have, having the surgery? Yes. Okay. After, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. The, the second that they called rap on him, he was just like, just boop, 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 just, just, hello, ambulance, please. Yeah, just please. fell to the ground. <laughs> yeah. Just, just weeping. They carried him off on a stretcher and took him to the hospital. They put a left foot on his knee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, fast forward many years later to No Time to Die, 2021. Uh, well, Craig kept going back and forth on whether or not he was going to do another. Um, and this is what he had to say. I was never going to do one again. I was like, is this work really genuine, genuinely worth it? to go through this, this whole thing. I felt physically really low. So the prospect of doing another movie was just like, it was off the cards. And that's why it has been five years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like he, there was a big gap there. <laughs> well, yeah, nine months recovery for like a really fit, like someone in their 20s. <laughs> yeah. This dude's in his 50s. Like five yeah. years yeah. is probably right around this <laughs> yeah. right, right. Around the time. But also it's kind of like Daniel. Danny boy, you're just getting older. You yeah, gotta kind of like do it or don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay, two months into filming, Daniel oh, Craig no. slipped while walking. <laughs> oh, you guys, you guys, he's old now. <laughs> just imagine him like he just was this. Did he, he slip and off. walk when he was doing the famous, like the barrel, the barrel gun? He's <laughs> like whip. <laughs> They use it in the movie <laughs> instead of the what a what a swamp womp. and also he kind of like just let a tiny fart like when it <laughs> just to add insult to injury. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the director's like, you guys sh don't laugh, nobody don't, laughs. Don't laugh at him. Don't laugh at him. <laughs> Fucking shit. <laughs> just, just laying there going, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> um, so he injured his ankle. 
and it delayed filming for two weeks. <laughs> he said he said it was just like he's like it's so stupid. He's like I've gotten all these all these injuries from all these other things, and he was like. <laughs> Just he was like walking on a pier, but I don't even think it was like wet. <laughs> the story it just keeps getting more funny. <laughs> oh my god, Daniel, Daniel, what? Why? What? What happened? Uh, was it like a uh, like? Did you do your own stunts again? Was it? No, mate, I was walking. <laughs> Fucking slipped on a pier. It wasn't even wet at the time. <laughs> Was it, was it on a dry was, pier? Was it, was it on a wet pier? No. <laughs> so <laughs> when he slips on your ears, butter, butter. <laughs> and then the gun barrel actually pulls it off and shoots Bond. <laughs> oh my god! Okay. Oh man! So Delayed two weeks, oh. all because of a slippery, non-wet pier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, one other thing was that a month later, an explosion went awry, <laughs> blowing up part of the studio set, oh. and oh cr- and only one crew member was hurt, but he was outside <laughs> when he, when he was hit, and he had like a minor injury. He's probably like out there eating a sandwich, <laughs> <laughs> just, on a, just on a bench, <laughs> like one tiny piece of one tiny piece of shrapnel, shrapnel, like just. Hits him on the on the like side of the leg. Ow! Ah. Are there mosquitoes out here? <laughs> what? Yeah, he's like, he's like this. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Turns around. Oh god! The studio blew up. <laughs> he didn't even hear it. <laughs> he was listening to a podcast. <laughs> Actually, about explosions. <laughs> it was. He didn't even get injured from the explosion. He also slipped right on that pier. Right on that non-wet pier. <laughs> Just walk, walking down with his hoagie. What <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Why is this so He's funny? Like, He's on the ground. Oh, my sandwich. <laughs> oh. This like bologna falls out. <laughs> there was one casualty. The man's bologna sandwich. sandwich. R.I.P. bologna sandwich. It's the curse of Bond. <laughs> yeah, the curse of Bond. <laughs> he falls to his knees. No! <laughs> At the end of the we film, went, we behind him is a fire truck. <laughs> to put wee, 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 wee. My sandwich. Daniel Craig's like limping by <laughs> with his fucked up knee in his ankle. At the end of the film, dedicated to bologna sandwich. <laughs> Honestly, I'm surprised that bologna sandwich was not the name of a Bond novel. <laughs> Based on fucking Ian Fleming's naming skills. <laughs> <laughs> the, prop- the property of a bologna sandwich. <laughs> the bologna rarity. Oh Octa bologna. <laughs> bologna solace. <laughs> you only bologna twice. <laughs> no time to bologna. Golden bologna. Oh my god. Like we do this all night, you guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Under bologna. <laughs> Under bologna. <laughs> no bologna ball. <laughs> That's what it turned out. That's what it ended up. <laughs> My stomach hurts. <laughs> okay. All right. Beyond that, beyond all that, uh, the other shit showness of No Time to Die was its release date. Um, originally, it was set for November 2019. Oh, remember? Remember the was, before times? It was delayed initially because uh, Danny Boyle. Uh, was supposed to direct. Um, anyway, he left, and it was delayed till April 2020, a month before release. COVID pushed it to November 2020. Ironically, it was a shit show. It was supposed to start with the Casino Royale video. Um, I had written that script for the first episode because it was going to come out at the same time as No Time to Die, and then had to shelve everything <laughs> until till now. So we're getting really meta. This yeah. is a shit yeah. show within a shit show. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, then it was pushed to April 2021, then o- October 2021, <laughs> and it uh, right now is the highest grossing international film of the year. So, mm. um, and that is the longest time period between two Bond films. Oh, really? Whoa. Yeah. Is that kind of weird? That, that is weird because I thought it, I times. thought between Timothy Dalton and Pierce Brosnan was longer. Yeah, it was longer than that. Wow. Yeah. 
Um, actually, and it would have been longer when it orig- originally was supposed to come out. The longest still. Oh, interesting. Okay, so after all of that, this is um, Daniel Craig about the Bond curse. The thing about the curse of Bond thing is that it's fucking offensive, really. Let's be honest. It's fucking offensive. There's a risk in everything we do, and we have literally the best people in the world who do this, and there's every precaution is taken to minimize the risk. But there is a risk, and there's no blame. There's no blame whatsoever to anyone who turns around and starts blaming people and needs to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Damn. It's just like they do really fucking complicated stunts. Like yeah. shit happens. As we said, it's just statistically someone's going to get hurt. Yeah. Uh, bologna sandwiches lost. <laughs> yeah. I mean, bologna sandwiches. So many bologna sandwiches. This craft service is really that bad that you can only get a bologna sandwich. <laughs> they get real sloppy with the bologna just <laughs> sliding out of them. Just whoop, slide right out of that bun. <laughs> okay. So- that's it for Bond, but I do have this random shit show because I'm never going to have another chance to talk about this because it's very interesting. Oh. Completely unrelated to everything. In 1937, a comedian, very popular comedian, uh, Ted Healy, uh, he was most famously known for creating the Three Stooges. Remember when you said you oh, stooged me yes the other day, I and totally I said, "Remember that." Stooged him in the kitchen, and he was like, "Remember that," and I was like, "Oh God, am I gonna?" And she's what are you never gonna do to me? ever stooged me before, <laughs> but in by that the way, way. By, <laughs> like, by the way, for anybody wondering what the fuck we're talking about, I went up and was boinky. like, wink, 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 and I was just like stooging yeah. him. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Po- pretend to poke him in the eyes, like yeah. hit him in the nose. Look, like, what, is, what the two of you do in the privacy of your own bedroom? <laughs> it's is, perfectly natural for a yeah. married couple. Okay. To stooge each other. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Go boink all the time. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. Ted Healy, that's who he is. He I mean, was... we do have a Foley artist in the bedroom, though, when we do it. So, because, yeah. you know, I like the sounds. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Dr. <Thunder> clap. <laughs> <laughs> Baloney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gross. That was a all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, let's get let's finish this up. Ted Healy. Okay, Ted Healy. Okay, yes. this is how big and popular he was at the time. He was being paid at the time in today's dollars, uh, thirty thousand dollars a week. Whoa, that's how big he was. All right, so he it was a notorious drunk, and he was at a club uh, on L.A. Sunset Strip celebrating the birth of his first son earlier that day. So not celebrating it with his wife. He's out in a club trunk. Anyway, that night, Healy got into a fight with three, quote unquote, college fellows who knocked him to the ground and kicked the shit out of him. He stumbled out of the club drunk, a cut on his face and covered in bruises. A friend took him home where the next morning he started convulsing. Before his doctor could arrive, he died at the age of 41. This is the day after his son was born? Yes. Oh, how tragic. Uh, the coroner said he died from chronic alcoholism, and the police closed the report because it wasn't the fight that killed him. Mm-hmm. A later report discovered that these three college men were actor Wallace Berry, the club's owner, Pat DeCuckoo, and his cousin, producer Albert <gasps> R. Broccoli. Bum, bum, bum. After this came out, Broccoli admitted to getting into a fist fight with Healy. Oh, my God. He then was asked again. He clarified his story saying, uh, Healy punched me and I pushed him away. Asked a second time, a third time, he said, we had a scuffle, but we shook hands and walked away. Mm. Wallace Berry, on the other hand, the actor, was one of MGM's biggest stars and a notorious Hollywood fixer, Eddie Mannix put Barry on a plane uh, to Europe until the story died down and Mannix kept the press from printing anything further. Oh, shit. Scandal. An autopsy wasn't performed until Healy was already embalmed. Oh, this shit. was 30 years before Dr. No, <laughs> where Albert Brackley would produce that. Wow. So uh, he may or may not have killed the creator of Three Stooges. Whoa. <laughs> Holy shit. That's wild. That was the premise of Never Say Never Again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> uh, Coen Brothers film Hail Caesar chronicles a fictionalized version of Eddie Mannix, played by Josh Brolin. 
Wow. Oh, interesting. Oh, man. Remember, oh, man, the 30s. What a time. They had fixers back then. <laughs> right. Yeah. How just easy. get away with yeah. whatever the fuck you wanted. Yeah, just like, oh, they killed him. Like, why would he put the actor on a plane yeah. if there wasn't something that they did? Right. Yeah. Right? Right. I mean, even if it was, right, some combination of, like, uh, alcohol poisoning. Like, having the shit beat out of you certainly <laughs> would not help, help Yeah, anything. He was probably shit-talking vegetables. <laughs> yeah. Broccoli was like, Fuck, what? He was just like, my, s- my you... son's been born and I love cauliflower. Yeah, to cauliflower. <laughs> and then the green white fight happened again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Came back. Okay. I just thought that was an interesting story. That is really That's interesting. Really bizarre. Okay. Was Quantum of Solace worth it? Uh, that's kind of like a loaded question <laughs> because when you have a franchise that's gone on as long as it has, you're going to have some duds. Again, it's statistics. Mm-hmm. I mean- I mean, yeah, yes, no, well, no, because <laughs> no, because of how fucked up Daniel Craig ha- got. Yeah, you know, yeah. And his face and his shoulder and his knee and his foot sewn to his knee. <laughs> you know, like, like yeah. that's. I feel like probably the other movies could have happened without this one. So, like, maybe no. I'm kind of with you on that, actually. Yeah, like I, it's like that. That's the hard thing about franchises is because it's like, was it worth it? And you're like, well, you, am I ta- am I having to take into consideration every movie in this franchise? Because to say like, was this specific movie worth it? Like, I have to think of like, okay, where does it fit in the big picture of the whole like story of so I would Daniel I was, Craig's James Bond. That's what I was going to you know ask I mean? next was, was Daniel Craig's tenure as James Bond worth it? So you can wrap that. Into oh yeah, that too. I think I think for sure. I mean, they're they're great movies they've got good action they have beautiful cinematography um i think it's like you mentioned earlier right this is like the first i think bond franchise where he actually has a character like Mm -hmm. there's kind of a darkness to him he has an arc like he's sort of he's betrayed in the first movie and then he kind of takes the rest of the franchise to sort of like get over that and i haven't seen the newest one yet but i plan to but yeah so i think i think he's an interesting bond and i think it's a good series and it obviously like elevated the the genre the spy kind of thriller genre and so if quantum of solace didn't happen then the rest of these movies wouldn't have happened then i'd have Hmm. to say yeah yeah i think as far as daniel craig's um tenure as bond i think it it definitely was worth it um because because yeah like you don't with 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 specter anyway they tried to like kind of retcon a bunch of not retcon but they just said oh hey you know with the blowfeld he's like oh and all these things that you experienced yeah. that is all my doing it's like oh okay like, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of cool that they did that because like yeah they've never done that for a bond before ever you know so to it, 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 it right it elevated the bond franchise into let's actually make people think about these characters and not just want to see bond shoot yeah. and and ski down mountains <laughs> and and you know i did love in specter though how they I love Bond henchmen. I don't know why. Like Odd Job <laughs> is great. Jaws is great. Uh, even Mr. Hinks, Dave Bautista is like with this weird, like thumb in the eyeball. Yeah, like his thumb. Like we're like metal yeah. thumb plates or whatever. They was like yeah. the dude's eyeball. Like I love that shit. Yeah, there's great villains, and they're not like stupid and campy like some Bond movies. <laughs> like Amy Horn. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think I, I think I agree with with Ray. Yeah. Um. So I love Casino Royale. It is top 10 films. Oh, yeah. I think it is completely incredible because it is a movie that does not follow any film tropes that you can think of. It starts with a a terrorist plot and then an hour into it, it goes, here's a new character, his love interest. Mm -hmm. (laughs) An hour in Mm -hmm. and then let's all just play poker <laughs> yeah and then they finish that <laughs> and then he wins and he goes to have a happy li- happy ever after and right. then the shit hits the fan like the way that that narrative works is just not how movies go yeah. like and i think that is so cool and just it, love it all it over it just works incredibly right. well and his his relationship with vesper is so great and but it just explains and it was so cool that he was like it explained why he was so misogynistic like when she dies he goes the bitch is dead 
Like, mm. like it just, it, you, he's broken. He, it broke him. Yeah. And, he had to and put up, so. He had to put up all these like guards around his heart uh-huh. and yep. his knees and his ankles. <laughs> yeah. And so quantum for me, when I first saw it, I was like, yeah, it's more of this, more of that. Um, so I liked it at the time, but after rewatching, it's just the action in it is. It's so hard to tell what the fuck is going yeah, on. Yeah, that car chase. I had no idea. Yeah, like there's it took some me forever really to realize cool... you lost a door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was upwards of 900 cars in that chase scene. I, <laughs> yeah. I lost count. Yeah, and it's kind of like, and a lot of the the sequences are like that. They're just so edited to hell that there's cool parts. They have cool ideas in there, but you don't. You're you have no sense of place, so you're so confused when it happens, and so it doesn't have that moment of like, oh shit. Right. right. Well, it's like we were talking about this is when you when there's a movie that is edited too much. If there is too many edits in your movie, you're hiding something like a third car. Yes. <laughs> like I, do, I yeah. do not. If you just edited the shit out of your movie, like something went horribly wrong there. Yeah. So I'm kind of like they could have easily taken the, the little bits that are about like Vesper and his um, grappling with that and put it into Skyfall. Mm-hmm. And it would have. And so quantum didn't need to happen. So I think it's fine. I think it's a fine movie. Uh, going to Dan- Daniel Craig's tenure, I'm going to say something very controversial. I think Skyfall is very a dumb movie. <laughs> um, that is widely considered one of the greatest Bond films ever made and uh, widely considered Daniel Craig's best. And I think it's so dumb. It has beautiful cinematography. It's well-directed. It's just written like an idiot. <laughs> like the two things in that movie are about how much Sylvia has this meticulous mind about like how he's going to trap everybody. So he tricks Bond to coming to this island where he'll capture him and uh, take oh, him is into that Javier? Javier Bardem to put him in MI6 where the he'll just happen to put in his computer, which will unlock all the doors. And so Sylvia can escape to run into a tunnel and pretend to be a security guard in the, in the tubes. And, and then Bond just happens to chase him and he goes into a random door and then he goes up a ladder and then he's like, ha ha, you, I knew this exact thing was going to happen. And then he blows a, like a, uh, so a train falls on Bond, right? And it's like, you plotted all of this? Like, this you remembered is... a lot more of that movie than I did. Okay. I, just, I just remember his Home Alone uh, house. <laughs> yeah. And so, oh, so yeah. Then the, the, the house of booby traps. End. And then, so, but his whole plan is all of that leading up to that point. And his whole plan is to get to M to kill her. And he just walks into the room and tries to shoot her. And it was like, you plotted all of that shit. <laughs> Drives me crazy. And then the other thing about... Look, Javier, you're looking real desperate right now, okay? (laughs) It's a little thirsty. Just calm down. Yeah. Um, Uh. And then the other thing is they set up a big thing about how Bond gets shot and he's suddenly like racked with like, I failed and I'm like a terrible... And then he can't shoot and he's like shaking and he can't shoot the targets very well. And then he has to shoot the shot glass on the top of the girl's head and he can't do it. And then suddenly he decides, I can do it. And he beats up all the bad guys and kills everybody with one shot. And it was like, so you completely undid his arc for that movie, which is he couldn't mentally right, get himself. Right, he has himself. some kind of trauma that he's trying to get over. Yeah, and so it just completely yeah. undoes it. And it's like really dumb. Then you go to Spectre. And Spectre, I did not like the first time. I liked it a lot better the second time. It's them trying to make a, a very classic Bond film. Mm-hmm warts and all because <laughs> yeah. it makes it kind of boring yeah. and it goes for long periods of time but there are some cool moments in it um no time to die though i have seen it i loved it it is great <laughs> um, no spoilers that's it yeah it like is it. yeah the cinematography alone in that movie i was showing jenny ray some uh shots of it and it was just like <gasps> put it in my eyeballs yeah. oh my god <laughs> and that movie shots. is ballsy like it does some really cool stuff and there's some great action of like single shot sequences that are great. Oh, I love single shot stuff. So it completely is the opposite end of of quantum for me. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. So that I would say Daniel Craig is, his tenure as James Bond has been awesome. That's going to be hard to top whatever they do. Yeah, because they definitely, because he has that character arc and he kind of finally finds his solace in the newest one. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. it's it's going to be, yeah, how they're, how they're going to, they can't go back to just the nameless guy that just yeah. fucks and shoots. And, yeah. James Bond will return. ba ba 
happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Uh, so this is going to go up uh, the day before Thanksgiving. I am thankful for all of you here. Aww. You too. I'm thankful for all of you listening or watching on YouTube. Um, our friends who text us after every episode and just tell us the funny things. Hi, Melissa. Um, the series is a lot of work. Um, it eats up a lot of my free time, but I'm very proud of it. My Superman 4 video hit 50,000 views, which is kind of cool. Ooh. Our podcast reached 10,000 downloads, which is kind of cool. Nice. And we finally broke through Google's search algorithm. So if you search, it was a shit show. We do come up. Yes. <laughs> we did it. Yeah. You got through Google. Oh my God. The no, more baloney, <laughs> no more baloney slips for us. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm going to be straight with everybody. <gasps> uh, I gave myself two years to make this venture take off. So I don't ask for much. But if you are thankful for this podcast, let us know. If you're on Twitter or Instagram, send us a shout out. Um, if you're rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts, that helps a ton. Um, if you watch this on YouTube, make sure you hit that thumbs up. It, believe it or not, that helps Smash a lot. Smash that subscribe button. Um, yeah, I know. Put that at the end of my videos for a reason. <laughs> yeah. We would never do that to you guys, um, okay? We're classy. And while you're there, leave a comment. Just say say hello. Say wh where you're from. Um, S send us send us an email. an email. Send us an email. You guys remember email? Yeah. Shit, man. I want to I want to hear from people outside my personal circle. I, I want to know who's out there. I want to know. I want to hear from the shit show community. Yes. I yeah. want to hear that you enjoyed these or or didn't. Um, is your life a shit show? We want to hear about it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Send us an email. Uh, what is our email address? It was a shit show. With the I, it was a shit show at gmail.com. At okay, the gmails. Yeah, let us know how we're doing. Yeah.